Welcome to SideQuesting. In this episode, we're going to work out how we get our Scion 3A that we've been repairing connected to a modern day PC. In my case, I'm using Windows 10, but this will also work for Mac, it'll also work for Linux. What we're going to do is install a virtual machine and run a copy of XP. So let's get started. So there are a few things we're going to need before we start. If you don't have a copy already, you're going to need to download VirtualBox from virtualbox.org. Click on the big button and then choose the, uh, the platform package for whatever operating system you're using. In my case, this is Windows. Uh, I've already downloaded that, so I'm not going to download that again. Install VirtualBox. Next thing we're going to need is a copy of Windows XP. There's a copy on archive.org, which seems to have been published by Microsoft. I can't be 100% sure that it was published by Microsoft. <laughs> But as you can see, there's also a serial for it here, which we'll be needing later. So download the ISO file, um, and that's what we're going to be installing in VirtualBox. The next thing we're going to need is a link cable. If you don't have one already, this is basically an RS-232 interface, which we can use to connect the Scion 3A to the PC. These are available on eBay, and they range anywhere from about 15 to 20 pounds. Um, don't pay too much for them. Uh, there are some crazy prices on eBay, so look for something within that price range. For example, this one, you can buy it now for £20, which I think is, is not so bad, or you can try and bid on it. Unless you have a very old PC you're connecting this to, in which case you probably shouldn't be installing VirtualBox, you should just go straight onto an XP install on that PC. We're going to need some way to convert RS-232 to USB 2. I found this adapter works, uh, I'll leave a link again in the description. This is very cheap, £7, and it, yeah, like I say, it seems to work in both Windows 10 and in Windows XP. Finally, we're going to need a copy of Cywin. I recommend using the latest version of Cywin. It's available on many sites, but I'm getting my copy here from BioEddies, so just click on that link and uh, save that to a disk. So with the RS-232 dongle, I highly recommend installing the drivers from the disk. So I've copied the contents of the disk to a folder. And what we'll be doing is we'll be looking inside this R340 folder. Again, R340. And you can see we've got uh, drivers for a bunch of different operating systems. We need to install this under Windows 10 first. So we're just going to run this setup and install. Once that's installed, we should make a copy of those files and put them somewhere that our Windows XP virtual machine can find. So in this case, I've created a share directory called Windows XP, and I've put those RS-232 files in there. We also need to put Cywin in this folder as well so that it's accessible by our virtual machine. So with everything prepared, we're gonna create a Windows XP virtual machine. We're gonna launch VirtualBox. I'm gonna click on New. I'm gonna give it a name. Windows XP Sci Win. We're going to change the location where it's stored. You don't have to do this, but this is just for tidiness. Virtual Machines, Windows XP. We need to make sure that it's a 32 bit operating system. We're going to increase the RAM to around about uh, 4 meg. And we are going to create a virtual hard disk now. So we just click on this Create button. All of this stuff is fine, unless you want a smaller virtual disk image, but 10 gigs should be okay. Now there's a few settings that we need to take a look at before we power up this virtual machine. The first thing we're gonna do is go down to USB, and we're gonna add a USB device. And we should see our USB 2 serial adapter that we, uh, we've just installed. If not, Probably worth rebooting your computer, uh, make sure it's there. Next thing we're gonna do is add a shared folder. This is gonna be where the files that we wanna have access to in our virtual machine are stored. So again, I'm gonna to go to where I've stored these files. Select that folder, auto mount it, I'll give it a 
drive letter. With those two things done, we can start the virtual machine. And it's going to ask us for a startup disk. Now this is where you're going to use the Windows XP ISO. So I've already got this uh, attached here, but if you don't, you can add. And then go to the directory where you uh, downloaded this copy of Windows XP from archive.org. So I'm just going to choose that and start the machine. Windows setup will begin. It'll do a bit of preliminary checks and then we'll have a few click-throughs. So once we get the welcome to the setup message, all we need to do is press enter. We then have a license agreement, which I'm sure everybody's just agreed to automatically and we'll hit F8. We then need to format the virtual disk that we created. So we're just gonna hit enter here and we're gonna format and partition that as NTFS. Once the drive is formatted, uh, the setup will start copying some files to the drive. This will take a couple of minutes. It's a lot quicker than it would have been back on a machine which should have been running XP natively. Once those initial files have copied, we need to reboot the machine. We can either wait 15 seconds or just hit enter. And now you're gonna get the message, press any key to boot from CD. Just leave this to timeout and now XP will continue to install. After a little bit more installation, you're going to get this pop-up for regional and language options. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we can just click on next. I'm going to enter a name and an organization. This is where we need the product key. So if we go back to uh, archive.org, um, there's a serial here, but we need to type that in. I don't think we can copy and paste that in. I'll just check. No. So we're going to type that in. Uh, that's fine. We'll give it a simple password. And we will just set up the time zone I'm in. And the install will continue. So for network settings, you can pretty much just click next through all of this stuff. Next. Windows will reboot the machine one more time. Again, it'll prompt us to press a key if we want to boot from CD. We don't want to do that, so just let that time out. And now XP will run for the first time. On this display settings, we're just going to click OK, and that's fine as well. So now we get a few um, welcome messages we need to click through. Don't need to turn that on right now. So this is just virus protection. I say just. It's going to check the internet and it should find that you're connected for a local area network or home network. So just click on next. Um, we're not going to register with Microsoft at this time. Uh, going to enter a user, hit next. And that should be the click throughs completed. So now the thing that always amazes me about booting up XP is how many of these little pop-ups we're going to get down here. So uh, let's play whack-a-mole with those. Yep. You got another one for me? Yep. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is go to this devices drop-down and insert guest additions CD image. This will install a whole bunch of drivers and utilities that will make it easier to use. Uh, for example, it will give us access to our shared directory. So just click on Next, Next, and Install. This will take a little bit of time, but just bear with it. You'll get a few of these pop-ups during installation. Just click on Continue anyway. Once all those additions have finished installing, we can just reboot the virtual machine. Once it's finished rebooting, there's a few little housekeeping things we can do. So let's change the resolution. We'll right click on the background, hit properties, whack-a-mole that one, and that one again. Uh, we'll up the resolution. Another thing I like to do is click on the start menu, right click on my computer and have that show on desktop. So if we take a look in here, we should see that we have our share drive that we set up earlier. 
From here, we need to install the drivers for the um, USB to RS-232 interface again, but this time for XP. So we'll go into this R340 folder, and we'll, this time we'll use the Windows XP driver. Click Setup and Install. I'm going to reboot Windows one more time just to be sure. So with XP restarted, there's just one thing I want to check. I'm going to go to Start menu. I'm going to go to Control Panel. I'm going to switch to the Classic View. I'm going to double click on System, Hardware, Device Manager. And if we look under Common LPT, we should see we have COM3, a USB serial adapter. So next we need to connect our Scion to the PC. We're going to be using this RS-232 to USB interface. It's connected to a Scion 3 link and we're going to connect the Scion 3 link to the Scion. Now one of the things we need to do is make sure that the remote link is set up properly. So if you open up your Scion, turn it on, you'll see under special there's a remote link option. Click on that, make sure it's on and the board rate is set to 19200. Now it's time to install Scion. So we're going to go to my computer, we're going to go to our shared folder. Uh, in the Scion directory I've got Scion. Click on next, we agree, and that's fine, and that's also fine, and that's also fine. Okay, so it's now it's asking us to make sure that we've got our Scion connected to the PC using a remote link cable. We've just done that, so this should be okay, right? Hmm. Okay, we'll finish this installation, and you can see that it's trying to connect and it won't connect. But we can fix that. So if we cancel out of that, You'll see down here, you've now got this uh, straight bar. Uh, if we right click on that and go to properties, it'll try and connect again. But if we go to the connections tab, we'll see that it's trying to use COM1 and COM2. So we don't need that, we need COM3. Also for the Scion 3A, the maximum uh, link speed is 19200. So we're gonna click on that, apply, okay. And we're gonna do connect. you should then get this Welcome to Scion pop-up. This is just wanting to uh, you to give a name to your Scion, so we're going to call that Scion 3A. And now the straight lines become kind of a sine wave and it shows that we now have a connection to our Scion Series 3. So if we click on My Scion, after a second it should show the drives. So in A I've got the Games SSD, so if we wanted to copy those off of there, we could do that. And so this is the internal storage. And if you want to install apps on a Scion, you need to put them in an app folder. So here you can see I've got a few different things installed. But if I go to the 3lib library, and let's find something S3util, Freenote, why not? We're going to install this uh, OPA by just dragging it into our apps folder. And then on the Scion, we can just go to the install drop down. So that's it. You've now got your Scion connected to a Windows PC, kind of. We had to jump through some hoops. We had to run a virtual machine. But this seems to be the most stable way to connect a Scion to a modern day PC. And it will work on any operating system that can run a virtual box. So that's the Scion 3A connected to the PC. In the next episode we're going to take a look at a few games including one that I wrote um, and that's probably going to be the end of this mini adventure with the Scion 3A. Um, we're probably going to move on to this Scion MC400 which if you watched the first episode of SideQuesting you'll know this is kind of what started it all. Uh, I finally got my hands on one so let's see what we can do with that. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.